be in the portal with impunity. They know full well where he is and where he should be. They made a reference, I think, in the last episode to him going to ground, but he was right there in the middle of the portal. So I thought that was weird. Yeah. And it's also weird that he, Markham would even be meeting with him, you know? Like, with Seabass? With Seabass, yeah. Well, I think I mean, he's the last of the lieutenants left. <laughs> Everybody uh, else true. is dead, so he's got to, uh, yeah. And it does, uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, him and uh, uh, Markham and, and Catherine had that conversation about, like, loyalty and stuff. Yeah. It kind of fits with him, like, tossing out cash. Oh, to, absolutely. To buy the loyalty, so. Yeah, yeah overpay him. Uh, overpay yep. him. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what uh, that's what happens with Seabass. I don't think we see him again this season. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the last of Seabass. He gets away. He, I, think I don't so. know if he does I or not. So. I don't remember. I really don't remember. I haven't. Uh, yeah. I haven't watched the next episode yet. So, uh, and then you know we see Walker a little bit later. He stopped at a rest stop. He's struggling with his gunshot wound. He had his vest on, but it was in the shoulder uh, where the vest doesn't cover. And it went in the shoulder, didn't exit, which is rough. Um, and so he uh, he has to cut it out. And uh, he patches himself up using paper towels from a gas station or a rest stop bathroom, which you're lucky, first of all, that there were paper towels in there. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's almost never you can the case. Use, use uh, like uh, tampons or what's Yeah, it, like, right? Yeah. Toilet exactly. seat covers or whatever. <laughs> and he had some of that, uh, that uh, coagulant. I don't know where he got that from. And then he had to use paper towels to like stanch the bleeding. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. Because he sp- he sprinkled that uh, that stuff on there, so yeah, yeah. But uh, so he is uh, he comes out of the bathroom. Uh, he looks a ma- uh, an absolute fright. He's sweaty. He's carrying a blood stained bulletproof vest. He uh, he's just been making a ton of noise in the bathroom. You've got a couple of people banging on the door outside, and he comes out and he finds two frat boys waiting. And uh, Walker, being smarter than the average bear decides that he has a plan that he's going to execute with these frat boys. And uh, I have a clip. About time. Let me guess. Fraternity brothers? What educational institution is lucky enough to have you for students? F. U. Heard of it? A great proctology program. I'll bet you'd love it. (gasps) Oh, went up my nose. I never went to college myself. Joined the Army right out of high school. Gave me some notion of fraternity. And we thank you for your service. Now, if you're done whipping your army putt in there, I got a shit. Begging the question, will your brother over there step in when I split your skull open? Wait, look, look, look. I, I was just kidding, man. So was I. Uh, Apologies, my twisted sense of humor. It has been a day. Where are you boys headed? Disney World there. Disney World. Maybe the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Orlando, huh? Of all the gin joints, the fates are smiling upon me, gentlemen. I was headed there myself. I can deliver this to an old army buddy. Memento of our time in the box. This vest saved his life many a time. Hey, how about I give you $300 to deliver it to Orlando for me, huh? Go ahead, take it. Take it. And for your incidentals, now don't be shy. You buy all the PBR and funnies you can stomach. Now, the address is 1212 Main Street. Repeat that back to me. 1212 Main Street. (laughs) See how easy that is to remember? Much appreciated, gentlemen. You two have fun. You know, how could you not? That's the happiest place on earth. (laughs) I mean, it's a smart idea. 
if you're not being hunted by the marshals, right? Like the locals no. would totally fall for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we've got activity on his credit cards. Let's get him. Um, but the marshals aren't going to fall for that. And uh, in fact, we see Raylan and Tim later having a conversation about that or it become, becomes clear that his ploy has failed. I mean, ideally the idea is, Hey, go, you know, use my credit cards down the, down the coast to Florida and they'll think that that's where I'm going. But yeah, they went to the porno store and kind of ruined it. <laughs> so, I love, there are a couple of things that I love about this interaction. The first is my favorite, my favorite moment is when he goes, is, can you say the same for him when I split your skull open? <laughs> yeah. And the guy who's sitting in the back of the truck does everything in his power to look the other way. <laughs> like, nope, yeah. I'm not in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's between you and him, dude. <laughs> Just straight up bails on his buddy. <clears throat> uh, who was being an idiot, but still, he's just straight up bails on his buddy. Yeah, and yeah. then the uh, the sarcastic like half salute. Well, thank you for your service. <laughs> it does it does make it clear like kind of how far the world has come since nine eleven, right? <laughs> like you yeah. would have never done that in two thousand two, but in twenty fourteen yeah. or twenty fifteen, rather, you can get away with it. Fourteen years later, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so Walker hops back in his Mercedes and, uh, takes off, uh, Tim and Raylan have a conversation about the Walker manhunt. It becomes clear that Tim isn't falling for the trick, uh, and that they're still looking for Walker in Kentucky. Um, while they are having that conversation, well, by the way, uh, Raylan has Willa with him when he comes in and Tim is incredibly skeptical of the child in the marshal's office. <laughs> he is doing some serious face acting, uh, seeing Raylan carrying Willa around. <laughs> it's great. And then the only marshal who wants anything to do with the baby besides art, of course, the only marshal who wants anything to do with it is Nelson and Nelson doesn't get to hold the baby. <laughs> He just gets blown off. He just off. gets shit on, yeah. <laughs> it's, I love the continual punching bag that is uh, Marshall Nelson. It's fantastic. God, I know. He's been put in the... That's like a hostile work environment. <laughs> it's just, just bullied, just constantly bullied. He's like, yeah. look, I deserve to be here. I did everything you did. <laughs> Shut up, Nelson. <laughs> Go get lunch. Oh, uh, it's so great. Uh, uh, but uh, Art is also at the office. He's walking around with a cane and a beard. He's bored at home. So he has decided that he wants to figure out what's going on with uh, Avery Markham and Simon Poole and Catherine Hale and all that. It's, it's, it's tingling his, uh, his martial brain because he remembers when he was uh, a young martial. It was when the Simon pool got killed. And, uh, uh, when Avery and, uh, and Catherine were at the forefront of, uh, of law enforcement's memories. So, uh, he goes in, he sees Avery in one of the conference rooms and, uh, he decides he's going to go in and have a chat with, uh, with Avery Markham. And I have a clip of that. He identifies himself as a plain old deputy, by the way, before this clip starts. So he's, uh, he's saying he's just a regular old marshal, uh, in this clip. <laughs> you know what? When I was just a pup, I served some warrants on some of your men, and then you and I passed each other one day in the courtroom when that judge you paid off dismissed all the charges. You must not have made an impression. I don't remember you. Well, memory loss, that's a sure sign of old age. So is losing your hearing. How about the old fishing pole? Still able to hook a fish with it? You know, I've been married for 28 years. I don't get to pull out as much as I used to. But I hear you do. I heard you pulled Catherine Hale into your boat. Why would you care about my relationship with Catherine Hale? Well, I don't, except for the one that you had with her 14 years ago. Wasn't it around that time that her husband, Grady Hale, got killed in prison? I, sorry, I have trouble remembering things, too. I heard it was suicide. Suicide, huh? Wow. Well, I mean, the reason I recall it is because that's around the same time that U.S. Attorney Simon Poole got his head blown off. You remember that? 
I remember he had a hard on for Grady. He did. That's right. And and you were Grady's partner, right? You know, a lot of people were saying that Simon Poole claimed he had a snitch in Grady's camp that ratted him out. You wouldn't have any idea who that was, would you? I'm confused. You call me a murderer or you call me a rat? <laughs> well, neither as such. I'm just thinking. I mean, it it wouldn't make sense for you to kill Poole to slow down Grady's case just to turn around and kill Grady so that you could be with Catherine. If I was just going to leave Kentucky. Exactly. That was not an easy decision. I love Catherine. Still do. Well, that's very sweet. But why leave? Unless maybe you didn't trust her or you didn't know what she was going to do to you. Art taking advantage of Ra- or Raylan's uh, message of wonderful things can happen when you sow seeds of distrust in a garden of assholes. <laughs> right. <laughs> just just taking one page right out of the book, you know, just, just fucking with Avery Markham a little bit uh, on the trust level. Just trying to decide, can you trust Catherine Hale or was she the rat in the first place? And he already suspects her of being the rat, which you, you know, Art didn't know, but you know, that plays very well into the conversation that, that uh, Avery and Catherine had in the last episode. So yeah, it's a cool, pa- pa- go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's a cool moment. Um, go, but go ahead. I, I, I have a, I was going to kind of change direction a little bit. So, Oh, I was just going to say it kind of parallels what, uh, a, uh, what, uh, Ava and Boyd, uh, you know, like yeah. the, there are trust, is- trust issues. So, uh. yeah, weird. You know, you wouldn't expect that, uh, you know, running a criminal enterprise for a living would mean that you can't <laughs> trust the people that you're working with. <laughs> surprise, so <strange>. surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Those of you who are on TikTok know what that is. <laughs> It's everywhere. Uh, yeah. And so what I was going to do is I was going to uh, talk about uh, the le- the uh, the fishing pole <laughs> reference because they, they, they take a little opportunity to make fun of each other a little bit for getting old. And, uh, you know, Art says, oh, you know, memory, that's the first thing to go as you're getting old. And and uh, and Markham fires right back because he sees his hearing aids. And he says, oh, yeah, you're hearing too. And then he asks him if he can get his dick hard, which... <laughs> Art, I think, has the best response to that I've ever heard in that situation, which is, I don't know, man. I've been married for 28 years. (laughs) I barely remember what it looks like. (laughs) So, but uh, yeah, I do. I do the little jabs that they take at each other when when it becomes clear that, you know, they're adversarial, right? Art, Art first comes in like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, just here to see what's going on. And then, uh, then starts to become adversarial and, and, uh, and Markham gets a lot more serious with it. So I think, uh, I think at least as far as the jabs, I think, uh, Avery, uh, kind of got the better end of that as far as like, uh, you know, needling each other. Oh, for sure. For sure. They uh, did for sure. They did. Uh, but, but art, you know, look, art, art's playing the long game. Art doesn't yeah. care if he lets if he gets needled a little bit. He's there to make sure that Avery doesn't leave trusting Catherine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yep. he knows that, you know, that could result in something good for him. So Yep. Yep. So uh yeah, so that's that. They all uh continue on the manhunt. Meanwhile, Walker is uh in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where he is in uh in Kentucky. And as Mercedes breaks down, which I thought it was pretty unusual. That's uh, it's a nice car. Um, it looked relatively new. It's very weird to me that it would have a, a massive mechanical failure for no reason, <laughs> kind of in the yeah. middle of nowhere, right? I mean, it's possible maybe a bullet hit something and it finally, you know, oh, like something. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about you know. that. Like it popped a, a, ho- a hose or something. Yeah. Or something, you know, like something just like was got hit and it weakened it and then finally gave out or something. Or yeah. So, you know. That's what yeah, I, that's I, I, I hadn't thought about that, but I, I mean, I was like, why? I don't buy this Mercedes breaking down. And then, and then, you know, you have uh, Walker basically, you know, threatening to put a bullet into the engine and then he chooses not to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so then he calls an ambulance. Um, 
calls 911, claims that they were on a hiking trip and that uh, his buddy fell and he needs assistance. And so they send an ambulance and um, the ambulance driver and the other paramedic, not exactly cooperative. Uh, They try and drug him and uh, he murders both of them. And again, uh, in what I think is sort of a very, 